This is Diary 4, and so far this research project has been amazing. It's taken me to many new places, and I've got exposure to new things I would never have normally done. I've never taught a horse how to pull a cart before. I've never explored even wanting to. But now that I'm a historian, I finally have the chance to try this new thing. Over the course of my research, I have gained tremendous experience. As well as learning some farrier skills, I am confident going forward and further exploring what it means to train a horse to pull a cart or carriage. the question, how were horses trained in ancient times, and how did that contribute to the development of society? From the very beginning of my research, a number of years ago, my greatest inspiration was a continental soldier of the American Revolution named Robert Shirtliff, but her real name was Deborah Sampson. There have been a lot of myths and legends surrounding her but she ultimately was a real young woman who disguised herself as a man to serve the American cause for independence against Great Britain. Her story inspired me in this way and made me want to learn history, and that's why I'm here as well. In her earliest year, she was a field laborer. She was sold as an indentured servant at the age of 10 because her father had gone missing or never came home one day, leaving his family destitute. So she grew up in a very tough, hardy environment, totally preparing her for war times that were coming. She was self-taught. She had taught herself to read. And by the time she was 18, she became a school teacher. When the war with Britain heated up, she donned male clothes and signed up for the 4th Massachusetts Regiment, which was an elite fighting force of agile and athletic soldiers, originating in Massachusetts where the war started. With her as my inspiration, I set out to study what colonial life was like, and combined with my love of horses, I'm finally reaching a conclusion of this part of my research. This leads me to study ancient civilizations in general when horses were the powerhouse engines of the developing world. Here I am first training my mare to pull a cart, but first having her pull a tire, driving her from behind. This idea first came to me from a man named Dan Hard, a senior coachman at Colonial Williamsburg. He showed me first how to tack up a horse for the wagon, as they would have done similarly in colonial times. And then rotate it and set it back. And you want to put the collar on first, um, because then the skin starts warming it up right away to get it more pliable. 
Mm. And then the saddle, driving saddle goes in place. Uh, the trace carrier and all that, the, the trace line, that you want it to be pretty much a straight line from a, the point of draft straight back to the swindle bar. Okay. And the reins have adjustments, so if you have one horse that is working more than the other, you can actually adjust them to hold that horse back and let the other one out. So that when you pull back on the reins, you're making contact with the one who's doing the most work first. So you can keep your hold Wow. side. We throw it across because we mount up on the right side of the carriage. Okay. So we throw this one across because you don't want to throw a bucket with anybody. Uh-huh. It's not all about the safety. And when we hitch, we have an exact way of hitching. Again, it's for everybody's safety. Nice. He then kindly took me for a ride in a carriage through town. All the while explaining to me the ins and outs of horses and horse behavior keeping in mind horse psychology and how they were trained. The horse is more scared of what's behind him than what's in front of him. If he's going forward, I can point him at some big immovable object right. and we will come to a stop. Or oh. if I've got the space, I just guide him around things and let him tire themselves out. Okay, interesting. Whoa. But if they're going forward, you have at least some control. You can, you pull their heads, if they're really going and going, you pull their heads around. Where the head goes, the body will follow. No matter how cold the day, my heart has warmed to see with your favorite them. Um, <laughs> standing here calm and with confidence after I just hitched her up. The thinking behind that is that she will not associate being hitched with immediately going forward. Her natural inclination is to go very forward and rush once the cart is on, but that's not what I want her to do. This may be from her past as a racehorse and as a, an Amish buggy horse. All this means is that it can be very lengthy to teach her, like they would have done in the 18th century. teaching her to walk because as a racehorse she was trained to shoot out of the gate and in the cart she tries to do the same. 
As an Amish buggy horse, she was trained to trot at an almost galloping speed on the open road, and our cart is not stable enough for that, when I just want her to walk on trails. My fear is in a panic, she will just take off and have an accident. So I have to spend a lot of time slowing her down and retrain her thinking to just slow walking with her new family. To retrain her will take a long time. Over the course of this experiment, I have gained tremendous respect for the men and women of the past who taught horses how to pull carriages. As I'm wrapping up my project for the study, I'm reflecting on all that I've learned, and my greatest takeaway is the heartfelt patience and enormous fortitude it must have taken these people to train horses in times past. Because I've been practicing with my own cart and horse, I now have a greater appreciation for what that means. Many, many people then, mostly the higher classes and the gentry and or the military, utilize horsepower quite often. So I've done what I could to put myself in their shoes to the best of my ability. And now I've been focusing on carriage pulling and it's been a new challenge for me because I've always ridden horses and trained horses to ride. But this is my first carriage experiment. Another great takeaway from this research project I have learned is that horses and humans have mutual responsibilities. The horse is supposed to not act like a prey animal and be calm and listen to your cues. And as the person, we are supposed to be a good leader and give them confidence in what they're doing. So in everything that I do with her, that's always my number one goal. And a deduction of mine is that if you teach a horse confidence, then they'll be able to do most anything you ask of them. I actually learned this, yes, in my own horsemanship walk, but studying George Washington's horsemanship too. And I have read several manuscripts from the 18th century where accidents happen. I have some interesting stories and I'm gonna share one of them. It was 1798 and a man and his wife were driving their carriage between towns in rural Virginia. The man driving unwisely whipped his driving horse so as to open an old wound on the poor animal's back. This naturally spooked the horse and he started to kick and fight at the cart he was pulling. He fought the harness, clearly spooked by the pain, and caused the carriage with the man and his wife inside to topple sideways. A not so distant rider, seeing the incident, breaks out of his trot full into a gallop to go and help. Once he gets there, this man dismounts, assists the man and his wife in recovering their senses, getting the horse back in place, and he and another passerby proceed to physically push the cart back up into place. Now, who should this be? This strange rider that has come to help them in this seemingly unsuitable circumstance, but George Washington. He had already served his terms as president and was now enjoying his life, living out his dream of riding and training his horses on and around his Mount Vernon property. There are many people from this century that keep inspiring me to pursue horsemanship more and more, and that's where this has led me. And fortunately, now that I'm wrapping this project up, I have reached many interesting conclusions. I have had a very fun, very educational time teaching my horse how to pull carts and how to do things they would have done in the 18th century. Thank you.